This instructional video lesson is anchored from English 7 Learners Packet or LEAP, pattern from DepEd Calabarzon's Pivot 4A. Special thanks to teacher Thessalonica C. Abesamis of SDO Tayabas City. Hello, dearest learners! We are now on the third quarter of our new normal class in English 7. I am Ms. Lani, and let us all together learn and explore the world of English. For the third quarter, the first most essential learning competency that we're going to target today is to use correct and appropriate multimedia resources when orally giving information, instructions, making explanations, and narrating events in personal or factual recounts. The content of this lesson has something to do with preparing the questions and knowing the appropriate way to ask them during an interview. At the end of this session, you must be able to express ideas, opinions, feelings, and emotions during interviews, use appropriate prosodic features of speech during interviews, and employ an appropriate oral language and stance in an interview. In second quarter, you learned that people are sources of information and an interview as a primary source is a way to gather information. In this lesson, you will learn the effective ways in conducting an interview. Now, observe the following virtual interview. During an interview, whether it is face-to-face -face or virtual, asking the right questions help you to get important information from the interviewee. An interviewee is a person who is being interviewed. It also helps you develop your confidence since asking questions means you have to speak with people. To accomplish this, you must plan the interview questions carefully. The following are some of the useful tips for you to remember as you conduct your interview. Before the interview, remember to 1. Know the person's background and get an idea on the kind of questions he or she can answer. Next, make a list of questions regarding the subject or issue you have agreed upon. Lastly, avoid asking questions answerable by yes or no and try to ask an open-ended questions by using the five W's and H. Who, what, where, when, why, and how. Sometimes, they are not a question at all but a statement meant to prompt a response like, Tell me about, describe, tell me more. Now, these are the different tips that you should remember during the interview. First, as an interviewer, make your interview be comfortable and at ease, no matter how serious the topic is. Next, be aware of your body language. Make and maintain eye contact with your interviewee. And lastly, take down notes by writing in a piece of paper or use a voice recorder if available. After the interview, you should first summarize the main points of your interview and thank the interviewee after you have asked all your questions. Those are the guidelines which you can put into practice to have a successful interview. Now, watch the following interview between a student and a local expert and observe the student interviewer's question during the interview. Mr. Javier, you know that everyone is greatly concerned about pollution. I lived in Mindanao last year. But I think the pollution is worse in the cities. 
To what extent is air polluted in Metro Manila? Sir? Indeed, the quality of air in Metro Manila is very poor. Our studies here in DENR show that, the air around Metro Manila, contains up to three times the volumes of pollutants in what should be normal or healthy air for us to breathe. May I know what these pollutants are? There are six major ones. Carbon monoxide, nitrogen dioxide, sulfur dioxide, lead, particulates, and total oxidants. Oh. I must take down all of them. How do these pollutants get into the air, sir? Here in Metro Manila. Motor vehicles are the dominant sources of pollution. Our study shows that diesel-fueled vehicles are the primary sources of particulate matter. Gasoline-powered vehicles, on the other hand, are the main sources of land pollutants. It's my first time to hear about particulate matter. What is it, sir? Particulate matter is made up of all sorts of tiny particles in the air, like dust and the ash fall from Mount Pinatubo. What we see coming out of smoke belching jeepneys and buses are, in fact, millions of tiny pieces of burnt oil and fuel. Why should we be concerned about air pollutants? You see, particulate matter has been found to be the most damaging to our health. It can cause cancer and pulmonary diseases. Lead too, poses a health hazard, especially to children. Studies have shown that the children with high levels of lead experience more behavioral problems and decrease ability to concentrate. So, don't be out in the streets so often. I learned so much from you sir. Thank you for sharing your expertise with me. You are welcome. See you again. For your learning task number one, after watching, write a short summary of the interview. Like this, for example. In this interview, the student asked Mr. Javier about air pollution in the city. Again, from the interview that you have watched a while ago, you're going to write a summary about it. Be guided with the given example. For your learning task number two, in this task, you will list down three questions which you think are examples of effective interview questions the student asked Mr. Javier. You're going to explain why you think those were effective based on what you learned from the discussion. You're going to write your answers on your paper. So be guided with this example. So take a look. The question is, to what extent is air polluted in Metro Manila, sir? Again, ito ay yung question na ginamit ng student sa pag-interview niya dun sa local expert. Now, the reason why this question is an effective question is that this is an example of open-ended type of question. Meaning to say, this is not answerable by yes or no. For the next task, you're going to evaluate the interview based on the criteria shown. You're going to check the box if each indicator is observed. So, ang gagawin niyo dito, i-evaluate ninyo yung interview kanina between the student and the local expert. So, you're going to check the box if the indicator is being observed in the interview, kung nakita ba yung indicator na to dun sa way ng pag-interview ng student sa local expert. Number one, the questions are interesting, open-ended, and engaging. Next, the questions are all related to the topic or subject matter. Next, the questions are designed to draw out information from the interviewee. With regards to politeness, sa palagay nyo ba, the student never interrupted or hurried the person being interviewed and the student thanked the interviewee after the interview. So again, ang gagawin niya dito, if yung mga indicators na to ay nakita ninyo dun sa way ng pag-interview ng student dun sa local expert, you're going to write 
or to put a check mark on the box before the indicator. Audio in communication is an essential tool to deliver message. Before, an audio can be created and transmitted through tape, radio, or CD. Today, a different alternative is offered by the internet, the podcast. You may have encountered a term in your previous lesson in listening strategies. Podcast is a digital audio file that is posted on the internet, for example, the Spotify. For your learning task number four, you're going to practice the guidelines in conducting an interview. So you're going to interview an expert in any field like for example a teacher, a nurse, an engineer, and many more. So imagine that you will produce a 5 minutes informative podcast about your interviewee's expertise. Again, ang gagawin niyo dito, i-apply niyo yung mga guidelines sa pagconduct ng interview. So mag-i-interview kayo ng mga tao in their field, kunyari teacher, nurse, engineer, uh, police, or kung sino pa man. Okay, so imagine na magpo-produce kayo ng 5 minute, 5 minutong informative podcast tungkol dun sa expertise ng inyong i-interviewin. So halimbawa, i-interviewin ninyo ay teacher, so magpakandak kayo ng interview sa teacher and then ang, ang content ng inyong uh, interview ay tungkol sa expertise niya bilang teacher. So, kailangan makapag-produce kayo ng 5-minute informative podcast about your interviewee's expertise. So, you're going to follow the following steps. The first one is, copy and accomplish the template on interview plan in your paper. Then, provide the interviewee with a copy of the interview questions to allow him or her to prepare answers. Remember to use open-ended questions. For example, if you're going to interview a teacher, you may ask him or her, uh, what would you give someone who like to follow a similar career to you as a teacher? So you're not going to use a question which is answerable by yes or no. Again, uh, ang una yung gagawin is kopyahin ninyo yung template na ipapakita ko, yung template ng interview plan sa inyong papel. Tapos, uh, magpo-provide kayo ng copy ng questions ninyo para sa inyong interviewee para makapag-prepare sila ng kanilang sagot. Okay, so this is the interview plan. Okay, you're going to accomplish this template in your paper. So, make sure that you will write the interviewer. So, yung interviewer, kayo yan. The interviewee, sino yung i-interviewin ninyo? Now, what is the purpose of your interview? Ano ba yung purpose kung bakit nyo siya i-interviewin? Okay, next, information na you know about the interviewee. Job, position, title. So, ano yung title ng position niya? or ano yung, yung job description niya. So, workplace, saan siya nagtatrabaho, years in service, and others. And then, you're going to write the possible questions that you were going to ask to your interviewee. And then, on this one, you're going to write their answer. Number two. If a smartphone or any sound recorder is available, you can use it to record the interview. You can use your recording to complete the last part of the interview plan where you will write your interviewee's answers. Remember to use a direct speech or write the exact answers of your interviewee. So, kung meron kayong mga smartphone or device na pwede nyo gamitin sa pag-record, yun yung inyong gagamitin. So, i-record -re nyo yung inyong interview. So, yung recording na yun, magagamit nyo siya para makumpleto ninyo or masugatan ninyo yung last part ng interview plan wherein isusulat nyo kung ano yung sagot or mga sagot ng inter inyong interviewee. So, Tandaan ninyo na ang gagamitin nyo ay yung direct speech. Ang ibig sabihin ng direct speech, kung ano yung exact 
na sinabi or exact ni answer ng inyong interviewee. Lastly, after the interview, reflect on the questions that follow. Write your answers on your paper. So the questions are, what was it like to interview someone? Anong feeling nung nakapag-interview kayo? Okay, next, which of the tips or guidelines did you use and how did it help you as an interviewer? Meaning to say, ano yung mga tips or guidelines ang ginamit niyo and paano ito nakatulong sa inyo bilang interviewer? So, for you to be able to know how your output will be graded, be guided with the following rubric in conducting the interview. So, we have here um, interview questions and organization of the interview. So, you will be given 5 points sa interview questions if open-ended questions and follow-up are used that draw interesting and relevant information from the interviewee. You will be given 4 points if open-ended questions and follow-up questions are used appropriately. 3 points if open-ended questions and follow-up questions are occasionally irrelevant to the topic. And 1 point if only yes or no questions are used. No follow-up questions are asked. Then for the organization of interview, you will be given 5 points if the questions are arranged in a clear and logical manner. 4 points if 1 to 3 questions are not clear, organized in the interview. 3 points if more than 3 questions are not clearly organized in the interview. And 1 point if the organization of questions is not observed in the interview. Now, let us see if you gain new learnings for today's lesson. You're going to identify the questions if it is effective or ineffective. Check the appropriate box in the first column, then improve the question if it is ineffective. The first one is done for you as your guide. So, these are the questions. Okay, for the example, number one, is runny nose a symptom of COVID-19? So, you're going to evaluate this if this question is effective or ineffective. Now, since this question is answerable by yes or no, this question is ineffective. Okay, so paano natin uh, gagawin na effective yung question na to? Diba? So, kailangan gumamit tayo ng WH question like what, who, where, why, when, and how. So, from this question, is runny nose a symptom of COVID-19? We can use or we can make it as to what are the most common symptoms of COVID-19? Again, in conducting an interview, remember to do the following. First, know the interviewee's background. Next, ask open-ended questions. Third, maintain eye contact with the interviewee. Next, take down notes on a paper or use a voice recorder. And lastly, thank the interviewee after the interview. And that is all for today. I hope you learned a lot from today's session about the effective techniques in conducting an interview. Thank you for watching. See you again. Bye!